Speaker, I'm happy to hear I'd like to welcome Minister Fitzgerald to the House and commend Senator Van Turnout and her colleagues for putting forward this important motion. I think it's been an excellent debate. I'm very happy to support the motion and, and uh, of course, to line up with everyone else in the House to support it because we are united in this issue. Uh, the Minister has spoke very eloquently about the culture of cooperation that, uh, that uh, is such an important part of making Ireland, as you put it, Minister, a cold house for this sort of child beauty pageant. And even that phrase, I must say, is, is quite hard to say. It, it, is, it does not ring, ring well in the mouth. It, you know, it, just, it sounds completely wrong to be speaking about children in the context of beauty pageants. Uh, we are all united on this theme, uh, on this motion, and it's very much in keeping with uh, a, a human rights perspective on, uh, for children. Uh, and indeed, you know, as we united in, in support of the children's rights referendum uh, to amend the constitution to insert recognition of rights for children there, so too I think we should unite on this. Uh, and this, I think, debate shows the Shannon indeed at its best. Now, others have spoken at length of the, con of the context, and we're all conscious of the company from Texas, which sought to run uh, these pageants here in Ireland. Uh, indeed, when I did a search, just uh, looking at, uh, back to, um, at the um, media reports on it, I see that as recently as January, they're still saying they're going to run one. So they haven't given up, and I know Senator Van Turnout has spoken that and others. Uh, and although, I must say, in November, they said they would have one at Christmas. So there's a sense of a certain, a certain amount of, uh, of spin about this. Um, the uh, Senator Van Turnout spoke of uh, the enormous public support she's received for her stance. Uh, and she also said, in her view, that legislation might not be the appropriate manner to deal with this, that a, ba a ban in legislation might not be appropriate. I think that's, uh, that's an important point just, just to, to tease out for a moment, because the Minister spoke about um, uh, the difficulty in France with the, legis with the legislative proposal, which, as I understand it, passed through one house but did not pass another, so did not come into law because of the real difficulty. I think we'd have the same difficulty about how you define exactly what you're banning. Uh, and we all know what we mean by child beauty pageants. Clearly, the Texan company, uh, it, you know, falls squarely within that category. But there might well be other uh, events, or there might well be companies that seek to 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 um, fall outside of a definition through clever uh, through clever means. And I think we, we might have the same difficulties. And I must say, if we can proceed with the sort of um, enormous public support for uh, for these pageants not to be held in Ireland, if we can proceed on the basis that hotels will not welcome the business, and if we can proceed with the sort of rulings from the on commission de Rinky Gaelica and so on, I think that might be a better way to go. But I very much welcome Minister Fitzgerald's announcement tonight that she has commissioned research on this, because I do think it would be helpful to know how other countries uh, have, have dealt with this uh, and how, they've, how they have approached uh, the, con you know, the expression of the condemnation of these pageants. What's the best way to deal with this? Um, I do commend, as others have done, the Irish Hotels Federation and the hotels which refused to host the events last year. And I also commend the uh, Uncommissioned de Lerinke Gaelica for the ruling that others have spoke about on makeup. I would share Senator Moran's view that 10 does seem very young, but I must say I contacted the Commission myself today and they've explained their rationale. And it, it, is, it does make a significant difference. It's a significant step forward. And they've also pointed out to me that there were a number of CLRG fashion on both sides of the Atlantic which ran last weekend, just after the ruling came into effect. And the motion was adhered to 100%, which I think shows the effectiveness of this sort of voluntary approach. Now, I do want to just mention two other broader themes which have been raised during the debate. And the first of these, I think, was, was alluded to by uh, both Senator Van Turnout and, and indeed by the Minister in, in, in detail, uh, but also very eloquently by Senator O'Donnell, who spoke about the disappearance of childhood, and the Minister spoke about the theft of childhood. And I think we, you know, all of us share a concern about increasing sexualization of childhood, the sort of pseudo-adulthood as Senator Donald put it. Um, I think we're very conscious of campaigns in England to prevent inappropriate um, use of logos and, and, cl and clothing styles for children. And again, the Minister spoke about Retail Ireland's very welcome guidelines, which again are voluntary, but very effective. Um, the Children's Wear Guidelines, which again I got a copy of, are really, I, you know, I think really admirable. Uh, that slogans and imagery and clothing must be age appropriate, not sexually suggestive, not demeaning, derogative, or containing political slogans or images that could be interpreted as such. Slogans deemed humorous should be tested and so forth. And careful consideration should be given to what could be described as gender-specific slogans. And again, there's a whole campaign around um, overly um, gendered um, uh, toys and clothes. And I suppose on a lighter note, the, very, uh, the, the young girl in England who, sa who wrote to Lego saying that she no longer wanted them to just market the style of Lego, friends Lego for girls. I know my own daughters are big fans of Star Wars Lego, which is gender neutral. So, you know, there's, there, is a, there is a good deal of campaigning on this. It, it is very much, I think, in keeping with, with um, this general theme of, you know, of, of uh, overly, um, uh, of, of bringing childhood to an end too quickly. And as the minister put it so clearly, you know, ch 
childhood itself has only relatively recently been extended to age 18. We had a very powerful argument actually at the Constitutional Convention from a social worker who spoke to us, in fact against lowering the voting age to 16. And he, his argument was that social work, the social work profession and many other, others had fought very hard in recent decades to ensure that 18 was the age at which people reached adulthood and that childhood wasn't ended prematurely in, in any legal sense. Uh, and I must say I've recently written to the Minister for Justice to ask that we would change our current law which still allows a legal marriage to be contracted at the age of 16 in certain circumstances. I believe it should, you know, the legal age at which people should be able to get married should be, uh, the minimum age should be 18. And I don't think we should continue to allow the loophole that allows 16. I think it's, it's ripe for exploitation. And there has, in fact, been a recent High Court case, uh, well publicised, in which the judge expressed concern about this loophole in the law, well, this loophole, this, this exception or exemption in the law whereby marriage can be contracted legally at 16. So I'll proceed with that one. The final point to make is just, you know, that again, this motion also raises issues about the treatment of girls in particular. And I just uh, came this evening from an exhibition hosted by the Irish Family Planning Association and the all-party Oireachtas Group on Women's on Reproductive Health, uh, which really very graphically in visual form depicted the sort of terrible oppression of women and, and young girls that still goes on around the world in developing countries through practices like female genital mutilation. And I think it's appropriate in International Women's Week we remember that broader context for this motion, that this sort of you know, very um, distasteful child beauty pageant is really just one expression of this sort of, um, of, of this sort of oppression of girls, this discrimination against girls, which means that girls worldwide have much less likelihood of access to education, to, li to earn a livelihood, and even to uh, the same sort of health rights that their, that, their, um, that their male counterparts will have. So I think it's, it's a very timely motion. I'm really delighted to support it. Thank you. Sister Ben Tornos.